Good morning. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 718. Our service begins on page 355, and blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord, amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
a reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Armenians, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of God, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, you know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life, that this man sends words to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn, torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm for this morning is found in your insert. It's Psalm 30, and we'll say it responsibly by whole verse. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up, and I have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to help. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures, but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I praise you or declare you? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. and you have put me off on my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. 
Galatians, excuse me. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the, the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time. If we do not give up, so then whatever we will reap, so then whatever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world have been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the, his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter for, say, peace to this house. If anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for the laborers deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. But what, whenever you enter a town, they do not welcome you. Go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to your feet will wipe off in protest against you. Yet, not, yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and all, all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. I recently read about a drunk who smelled like alcohol, sat down on a, rubway, a, subway, um, a subway seat next to a priest. 
Now the man's tie was stained, his face smeared with red lipstick, and half bottle of empty gin was sticking out of his torn coat pocket. He opened his newspaper and began to read. I'm getting a signal not picking up. Okay. So he opened his newspaper and began to read. After a few minutes, the man turned to the priest and asked, Say, Father, what causes arthritis? So the priest, the priest replied, My son, it's caused by loose living, being with cheap, wicked women, and too much alcohol and contempt for your fellow man. Well, I'll be, the drunk muttered, and looking back to his newspaper. Several more minutes go by, giving the priest time to think about what he had just said, and he nudged the drunk and apologized. I'm sorry to come on so strong. How long have you had arthritis? And, oh, I don't have it, Father, the man said quickly. I was just reading here that the bishop does. So in our gospel reading, the Lord appointed... 70 others and sent them on ahead in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. Now, I feel like I'm going out ahead of him when I'm out and about, and I always try to wear my collar. On Thursday morning, I found myself standing in line at the Lackland Satellite Pharmacy waiting for the doors to open. Now, I struck up a conversation with those around me, and invariably, I was asked a liturgical question. A man aged 88 was stressing about his funeral. He didn't know what to do, what's involved in the service, who to contact. He wasn't dying, but he was really stressing about it. When we finished talking, he seemed like he was a different person. He was relaxed. He now had a focus. He had a plan. And when, whether we're standing in line or see someone who needs to talk, opportunities exist all around us to share the good news and prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Now, we're at a high point in Jesus' ministry, he had enough followers that he was able to send out 70 of them to go to the towns and villages to prepare them for his arrival. He warned them that their task would not be easy because some wouldn't welcome them. But Jesus also promised that the followers, that he would give them the power to heal the sick, and to drive out demons. It was this ability that really excited the missionaries. When they returned, it was the first thing that they reported to Jesus. It was as if they couldn't believe, clearly couldn't understand what God had done through them. Even evil spirits had listened to them in the name of Jesus. Wow. You know, the 70 that were sent out took a risk that required faith, a faith that God was with them, would protect them, and would use them. The followers of Jesus were called to express the faith that they confessed in the lives of action. Now, the first followers of Jesus weren't the only ones who Jesus called to take risks and to life in faith. Risk-taking is also required for us if we're to fulfill our calling. Taking a risk is a step of faith as we move out of our comfort zone. We take a risk any time that we allow our love of Jesus to be expressed beyond the walls of St. Matthias. We take a step of faith, trusting that Jesus will walk with us as we enter our community and the world. 
We take a risk when we share our faith, not knowing how people will react or fearful that they might reject us or that we might offend them. Our faith trusts that somehow the Holy Spirit will use us and create faith within the people. We take a risk when we seek to help others. We might be used or taken advantage of. Our faith trusts that the Holy Spirit will work through our talents and abilities to touch the lives of others. Being sent out, experience the lives of other people. We meet them on their own turf and allow them to set the experience. We seek to share the good news in a language the others can understand. In order to do this, we first have to listen. It's also necessary for us to seek an understanding of their situation and their perspectives on it. Only then can we engage them in a conversation minister to their needs and to seek to help them make sense out of their life situations that they're experiencing. Being sent out isn't just leaving pamphlets on people's doors or advertising in the surrounding town's newspapers. Being sent out is establishing relationships and being willing to be used by the Holy Spirit as conduits of God's love and grace. Those who had been sent out returned to Jesus excited about what happened. They cast out demons, they healed the sick and proclaimed the kingdom of God was near. Now using our talents, abilities, and time in order to touch other people's lives is exciting and fulfilling. Jesus rejoices with those who return to him. He affirms that they did have external consequences in the lives of those people. Jesus warns these followers, though, that they should keep watch with, that they don't become proud of what God is doing through their lives, but rejoice that their names are written in heaven. Now, the Lord says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. They were going to be in the minority. Those who believed in Christ at this time were in the minority. Those who recognized Jesus as the Son of God were in the minority. In our spiritual journey, the fact as we grow in faith, we come to understand and trust in the teachings and ministry of Jesus. Jesus commissions us to go out and carry on his ministry. We're also called to live our lives acknowledging to others that this gift of God's grace which we have received can make a difference in their lives as well. Now I can't even begin to explain how excited I am about St. Matthias's next phase as the Episcopal Church Foundation pivot beta test participants. For the next two weeks, five key leaders will be learning new ways to engage our local and our online communities by being out there talking with folks in our towns. Evangelism at its finest. And as I reflect back on the gospel reading, the fact that the original 12 were not sent out with the others. I can't help but think that the 12 disciples or anyone who's been called to ordain ministry, pray we properly equip those 
We send out with the insights and the tools to share what Jesus taught in his ministry. My goal is to assist everyone by supporting and equipping you, members of St. Matthias, both here and in our community of faith online. So with the strength that's needed to carry out the ministry of the Lord, may you be blessed in all of your efforts. Amen. And now let us stand and affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Prayers of the people can be found on page 387. We'll be using form three this morning. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful <clears throat> ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all those who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. We give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion for those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and needs of those of others. Pray for the unity of the Anglican Communion and the Episcopal Church. Anglican Cycle of Prayer, the Anglican Church of Tanzania, Diocesan Cycle of Prayer. Give thanks for Trinity Church, Edna, and Trinity by the Sea, Port Aransas. Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishops David and Rayford, our priest, Father Dexter, Diocesan Seminarians, President Joe, Governor Greg, we especially pray for the strength and healing for O.T., Allison, Roy, Roberta, Amber, Stephen, Tom, Joyce, 
Lillian, Amanda, Alberto, John, Joy, Marge, Margaret, John, Robert, Sandra, Les, Karen, Joe, Bob, Crystal, and Terrence. We pray for those who have died, John. Military prayer list, Haley, Nathan. For persecuted Christians everywhere. We pray for the people of Uvalde. We pray for rain, for our outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, Divine Hospice, Hank, Southwest Family Life Center, Military Ministry, Mission Divine, Project MEND, World Missions. Let us take a moment so you can add your own prayers and intercessions. Let us pray. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord. Here he is. Oh, I tried. <laughs> Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. I love that anecdote at the beginning. Oh. You. So nice to see Eric and your mom here. Peace to the Lord. So nice to see you. Roy, peace to the Lord. Roy, peace to the Lord. Peace the Lord. Peace the Lord, John. Peace. Oh, peace the Lord, Joanne. Peace the Lord. Can I have you take a couple photos? Yes. And then when we're done, I think I have it timed out to 15 seconds, but um, I think you have used my phone.
I'd like to welcome everyone that's here with us this morning in person and online. I know we have Karen and Joe in Westlaco. We have Pat in New York. We have Roberta in Natalia. We have Stacy and Steve and Mark in Rhode Island. So welcome. Um, before I forget, uh, afterwards, Meg did make I don't even, I forgot to ask them what, what they're called, but they're a, a gooey, clumpy, chocolatey thing, so, and they are gooey, so uh, you're welcome to, to share that. Um, let's see, we did, hopefully uh, you've received your electronic newsletter. We, I sent that out yesterday, and there is a link for you to click on uh, in the newsletter that will bring you to our story, our St. Matthias story. It's two and a half minutes long, but that's what we submitted to the Episcopal Church Foundation's um, pivot program for the other churches to see. We've even put it, Meg even put it on, Meg did all the work, I just spoke. Um, we even, she even put it on the YouTube, so it is available on YouTube. Um, I wanna make sure that everyone does have a um, daily bread readings for the next three months, and if you need a hard copy, we do have a hard copy of the newsletter that is uh, in the back of the church. Okay, I would like to call, let's see, we have Erica, oh, she's looking at me, what? If Erica would come up front, because we're doing our birthday and uh, anniversary blessings, so if... Um, we have an anniversary, and they're kind of avoiding my eyes. Oh, there we go. So Robert and Sandra. <laughs> and if there's anyone else that I'm missing in the month for the month of July that needs a anniversary or a birthday blessing, and folks at home, I don't have everyone's um, birthday and anniversary, so if you'll kind of just send, go ahead and put a text out, uh, you know, on the on the Facebook. Uh, we will make sure that next week um, we will mention you and for, for the blessing. Okay. So to start off with, um, Erica, do you want to say how old, how many years you've been on earth? Or 49. 49 years. Okay, okay. <laughs> and any words of wisdom that have come in your 49 year experience? Listen more, don't wait to talk. Wonderful. Kind of goes with listening to the, and when we talk about evangelism. And Robert and Sandra, how many years? Oh, you're asking. It's like when I used to ask Roy. Roy's like Roberta. How many years is it? So, 21. 21 years. Any, any words of wisdom that's come for a successful 21 years of marriage? I guess don't go to bed uh, mad. Always, mama's always right. Good mama ain't happy. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to uh, first start off with the, uh, the anniversary blessing. Oh, God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it, it represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon Robert and Sandra, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we do have a birthday blessing. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Erica as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Scott. Happy anniversary. Congratulations. Thanks, Father. Walk in love as Christ loved us 
and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 719. Our service, be, our service continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Sandra, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Robert, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Roy, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Rob, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Egg, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Erica, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Does your mom want us to go back again? The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Rebecca, the body of Christ. The bread of heaven. Okay, You're supposed to dunk it. Two more seconds. Next time you'll know.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with a spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God, the Father Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Our closing hymn is hymn number 720. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Sorry about the mix-up. Yeah, just because of COVID. <laughs>